Hey everyone, today I'll show you how to cut down your API cost by up to 50% with GPT batch processing. So if you're working with large data sets, batch processing could be a huge money saver. In this video, we'll start by generating a batch JSON file and then we'll submit that through the OpenAI UI. And then finally, I'll show you how to submit it directly via code. So basically I'll show you how to use this new batches feature on ChatGPT. So why batch processing? Normally each API call costs you. So if you're processing one request at a time, costs can really start to add up. But with batch processing, you could bundle multiple requests into a single job, which means it'll cost fewer, it'll have fewer API calls and it'll be more efficient use of your tokens. So today we'll use this batch processing to reduce your costs, making this is more ideal for high volume tasks like generating lesson plans, analyzing a bunch of text, or in the specific case that I'll be demoing, evaluating uh, user or AI generated lesson plans. So let's just jump straight into the code. So what I'm gonna do here is first, so there's three kind of three steps to, to like doing this batch processing. First, you're going to create like the API request, we're going to create a file with a, a ton of API requests, but it won't actually call the API yet. All it's going to do is create the request that will eventually be called in the API during the, during the batch processing job. So I'll show how that works. So right now I have this database that's full of a bunch of lessons and I'm, my batch processing, processing job is going to evaluate a bunch of lessons in this and I don't want to run it on every single one using the API without using the API batch processing API because that's going to cost me a lot of money. So you can see that each of these documents kind of has a URL to a lesson plan. See the lesson plan here. So what my piece of code does is it actually reads down from this database. So it's grabbing Firestore, it's reading down from the database, it's getting the lessons and it's streaming all of them. And it's grabbing the first 200 and then it's breaking out. Out of the first 200, it's grabbing the URL for the lesson plan. If it already has a score, it, it, it skips over it. But if it doesn't have a score, what it's going to do is um, fetch the lesson plan. So I have it in my Python code. And then I'm gonna generate a request. So this is, it looks similar to a, a, a request that you would send to GBT Live API, but instead all it's doing is it's formatting the request and then it's, store, it's gonna store it in a JSON, JSONL file. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll show how that works. Doo -doo -doo. So let, let me, so yeah, it's gonna run this and it's gonna grab a batch of 200. Build batch job. You can see it's building this batch input file, and these are the requests that are going to be ran in our batch job. So it's running an evaluation on a bunch of different lesson plans. It's going to run it on 200 different lesson plans. So this batch input JSON L is what we need to pass into the GPT batch processing API. So yeah, let this run. So now we have 200. I'm going to, it's pretty much easy as that. You can copy my code. So now we have this batch input file. It didn't actually make the calls yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to visit the batches API. And you can see I was running a bunch of different batches. What you need to know about here is these are the different batches. So I'll do create and I'll actually take that, I'll take that file input that we just created. So I'll go back end, I'll find in folder. I'll do reveal in finder. Where is that? Reveal in finder. I'll go to my back end and I'm gonna look for my batch input three JSON L. And I'm going to batch input three. I'm going to take this batch input three and upload it here. And I'll say the time completion is in 24 hours. 
So now I do create. And now it's validating my file. And you can see. Yep. Validating my file. Give it time. And now it's in progress. You see the 200 different um, API requests. It's doing one by one. And yep. In progress. Refresh 95. Refresh 101. Refresh 113. So what it so while it's doing that, I'll I'll quickly just reiterate what it's doing. It's taking every single API request here, actually calling the API, and then the file it's gonna return is for every line, it's gonna turn the response to what that request would have been. So the different elements here is a custom ID. So here is the document ID or the ID of the row in the database. So I could later insert the score back into it. This needs to be unique. The post request, you could pass in what model you want to use. And then you just pass in the prompt. So the prompt here is that it'll be, a, it'll, it's a curriculum designer evaluating a lesson plan created for teachers. Um, super long prompt, but then it goes in and you pass in the actual lesson plan that you want to give. Let's see. Should be done now. See, it takes a little bit longer, but I'll remind you that this is actually saving me 50%. Imagine I have to run 201 evaluations. That's going to cost me a lot of money. So I'm pretty cheap. I'm, pr I'm pretty much like this guy right here. So I do not want to pay that. So that's why I am doing this batch processing. taking quite a bit of time. It's already been two minutes since we ran it. We'll just wait. Keep refreshing. In the meantime, this, that's how you do it using the UI. You could also do it programmatically and if you do it programmatically, you could end up, it's it's more efficient because you could, um, what's it called? You could run like a cron job or something. You never have to touch the UI. Okay, nice, it's finalizing. So batch was created, took about three minutes to do. And it should print me out my output. Finalizing, finalizing. Nice, it's completed. And you could see like the timeline. And from there, yeah, you can download the output. I'll take this output and I'll drag this output into my code editor. Put in this evals folder and yeah, which one was it? Six seven one E C. Yeah, this one. We could see that it ran it on all two hundred and one. We got a status code of two hundred, that means it happened correctly. And then you could see what model it used. And then you could also see at the very end that for each of the lessons I passed in, it generated a score. And now I just have to loop over this JSON and insert the score back into my database for all those lesson plans. So yeah, that's how you do it in bulk using the UI. And then I'll quickly show how to do it using programmatically. So let's take that batch three input file that I generated before. This code will, will actually read the file in and then upload it to the website. It's gonna grab the file ID and then it's gonna create a batch. It's gonna create the batch. So we input the file, create the batch, give the batch a name. And then we could check the status on the batch the same way we are checking the status using the UI. And then finally, when it's done, we could output like the results. So let's just like cut this 
all the way down to like 10. Just to make everything faster. So I'm gonna run my piece of code over here. Sorry, I had to move myself. Um, Python 3 start batch job. So we check the status, batch, in progress, check the status, in progress, in progress. So we're checking the status in the same way and you can have, you can make the, the code just do this by itself. Um, okay, I'm just checking the status over and over. I uploaded the code. It might just be like throttling me because I just spam, I already just put 200 through here. Usually it's a lot faster, honestly. So let's see what data we have here. We have the file ID. But you could honestly kind of, it. once I uploaded, you could see it happening here in the UI too. But we're kind of doing everything programmatically. So you, you see that it was still, it's only eight out of 10 completed. So that can help, like if you're building UI, you could show a, like a status bar. Um, I'm going to let this go all the way through. Nice. 10 out of 10. Completed. And now I want to just print my result. You can see it printed my result the same way before, generating all the different scores. So yeah, that's how you do it programmatically and also through the UI. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video.